<laughs> we said, unfortunately, to our husband, <laughs> consternation sometimes. That's, That's great. wonderful. Now you, now you all have a, a talk show. It's Women Talk Live, mm -hmm. right? That's what we're here talking about. Tell us about that. Give, give us an overview of that. Okay. Uh, Women Talk Live is a talk radio show that comes on every Wednesday evening from 6 to 7 p.m. on WVIE 1370 a.m. You want to tell them a little bit about what's yeah, well, I was telling uh, you all at the break that Ann and I just decided about a year and a half ago that we wanted to do a radio show, and within three days we were co-hosting a show with someone else. Within three months he decided to give up that show, and we decided we would take it over. We so had a new career. We had a new career. <laughs> okay. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Within three days? Within three days, yeah. Now, how did it's you called know? getting clear on what you want, I think. <laughs> you know. Now, how did you know the audience was out there? We just knew. We just knew. Well, because we knew there wasn't anything that we liked listening to much in that genre and that we wanted to do something that was good for women, that wasn't angry, that was informative, that would give women a chance to talk about uh, things that, that they needed to know. And we say um, it's the stuff that women like to talk about. So it could be the stuff that keeps you up at night or the stuff you want to let other people know about. And I just want to mention for our viewers that we have live tours going on around here. We have lots of activities. Yeah, so if you hear something in the background, just, just keep in mind we are filming live here. Live at the top, at the of, top the, of the world. That's right. Beautiful. Lots of people at the top of the world. That's right. Right. That's right. So Jess, is this a bit too much estrogen for you? you know, can you, you know, handle it? I, I think I can <laughs> handle it. But you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty interested by the fact that you know, one day you all decide that you're going to do a talk show. Mm -hmm. Three days later. You're actually on the set doing a talk show? Well, actually, three days later, it was wrapped up that we would be doing the talk show once a month. Now, how, so, that, how did that happen? Right? How did that happen? Well, uh, I guess through networking. Through networking. networking. Uh -huh. A friend, yeah, had told us about um, someone, and we just contacted him, and he got back and said, let's do it. So it worked out really well. Oh, that's awesome. Perfect oh. timing. Yeah, perfect timing. Because then you said, not too long after that, he decided that he didn't want to be involved in this anymore and gave you his time. Right? He had been doing a show for like 10 years uh -huh. and uh, he says he decided to take a, an extended commercial break. Mm -hmm. And he said, you're ready. You know, take it over. And the first thing I said to Ann was, I don't have time to do a weekly video <laughs> show. Uh -huh. And then Ann said to me, isn't this exactly what you said you wanted? Because <laughs> sometimes we have to have those friends remind us of those things. Right. That's why we're good together. Now, did either one of you have radio experience prior? Kevin's not. It talked to you. They just had the gift to gab. Right, right. right. We, had, we had the ability to speak, and we also knew what women wanted. We could do a lot of work with women in our individual businesses, and we knew what we wanted to talk about. So I think that's just how the show started to come together. We, we knew what was missing. You know, as Jenny said, you know, what was on the radio was not what we were listening to. And um, we just felt that women wanted information. They wanted to be entertained, but they also want information. Because that, that's your background, right? Both of you have workshops. They're independent of each other, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I have a company called Living in Your Heart. And um, I spent 20 years in corporate America. And so this was a very big switch for me. Um, but it's about um, women, it's their intensive workshops for them to sort of remember who they are. And um, so I've been doing that for about five years now, and um, on a you know, regular basis, and Jenny, much the same. Yeah, Jenny, tell us a little bit about your workshop. Well, I have a, I have a background in corporate America also, and in 1991, New Year's Eve 1991, I left that to go work for a seminar company that I've been a client of. Got amazing training through them. It was a whole bunch of um, opportunities to learn new life skills, new ways of being in the world. And so when they left the area, I just took what I knew and went out and started doing my own thing. And my company's called Live Your Life on Purpose. And I call it that because I think if we live on purpose, we're not living by accident. And we're more actually um, kind of choosing what we really want for our life. But I also do a lot of work with women entrepreneurs. That's sort of my niche. And what did you all meet? Almost 11 years ago at a networking event. And uh, we sat next to each other. We'd never met each other. And um, you know, she had red hair. I had red hair. She was from West Virginia. I was from Virginia. We both had Southern accents, so we understood each other. And um, we just had a blast. And I'm not sure anybody else at the table thought everything was as fun as we did. <laughs> but we became fast friends after that, never knowing that it would end up that we would end up on the radio together. But 
got to keep your eyes open for opportunities. Right. All right. So, what type of guests do you have that come on your radio talk show? Well, we have a lot of authors. We have a lot of our guests are from out of the area, so we have them on remotely. We've had Deborah Norvlon, you know, the um, host of Inside Edition. She wrote a new book called Thank You Power, about the power of gratitude. And we're having Peter Walsh on in a couple of weeks, uh, who wrote this is Clutter Make Life Butt Look Big. He's been on <laughs> Oprah a lot. So you have both men and women. We have men and women. women. And we and men have something to say that we think women want to hear. We will have them on our show. And clutter is an issue for everybody, <laughs> and we figured Oprah warmed him up for us, you yeah. know, right. and so she had him on twice, and so, um, that's great, that's been great. And we've also had um, a woman that's a children's author named Laura Duxta, and she wrote a book that has been on the New York Times bestsellers list called I Love You More, and it's just, she's got these little children groupies all over the country, you know, and they sort of follow her around like the Pied Piper, but she's really interesting in the fact that she also has alopecia. Um, where she lost all of her hair when she was 11 years old. Wow. And she wore wigs for like 19 years and, you know, all of a sudden said, that's not who I am. And so the kids absolutely love her and she's out there in all of her glory. Wow. And then uh, coming up in a week or so, we have Jill Moss Greenberg, wow. who is the director of the Maryland Women's Heritage Center. Oh, that was great. Well, as you can see, we're a good supporter of Jill and the Women's Heritage Center. Like, well, you know, we've actually had so much fun with them because what they've done is provide us with a tidbit every week. That's a women's history tidbit and sort of a do you know. And we have gotten so smart doing the tidbits. Um, that we Google <laughs> them later to, yeah. see, you know, to see what more we can find out. Because you know, always more of the story. Well, give me an example. Okay, so, uh, uh, okay this past week, this past week, you know, who invented the bra? Uh -huh. And what was her name? I can't remember her name, but she invented it out of two satin handkerchiefs and um, ribbons. Uh -huh. And I said, obviously, she wasn't full-figured. <laughs> <laughs> she was young, she was 20-something social light in New York. And uh -huh. It was the time when whalebone was very popular, and apparently she had, on, she had a sheer gown, and the whalebone was poking out from here and out from here, and she goes, this won't do. And so she and her maid concocted this. And I think friends asked her to do it, and then she started a business, and somebody gave her a dollar to uh -huh. build them a, make them a bra. A dollar in that period of time. Well, the yeah. was a lot of money. Bras were in big demand. <laughs> you were just talking about yeah, we were, sports bras? Yeah, we were talking about brassieres. You should, you should Aren't you glad you're here? <laughs> Not only estrogen, but bras too. Yeah. I didn't know what I was in for when I was you're doing the show. You turned bright red. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the fuck was your comment though? Yeah, we were talking about bras and actually the first jog bra was invented by this woman who took two jog straps them together. Um, they, well, I'm still yeah. trying to envision that. <laughs> <laughs> support is support, right? That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. Hey, if a girl needs support, she, she, gotta, she has to make her own. <laughs> exactly. That's wonderful. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Well, well, anyways, tell us more about the, the type of guests that you have. When you talk about some of the guests, tell us some more of the examples of guests that you come to. Well, we had an interesting woman named Robin Kaplan, and she's with um, Yeah, and she's with um, group. Yeah, yeah, the Kaplan Thaler Group in New York, which is a huge advertising agency. And they're the advertising agency that did the Affleck commercials. And uh, I can't believe. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, you know, do, you know, whatever the herbal essence. And uh, so they, you know, do all of these big, big commercials. But they wrote a book called The Power of Nice. And the book is about how being nice helps you so much in the business world. Uh, in life, not just in the business world, but how they have become so successful by just being nice people. And they gave examples of, you know, being in New York on Madison Avenue. Sometimes people don't play nice, uh, and they've gone out of their way to do so. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a really interesting book. Yeah, and, and folks, just remember, if you hear some noise in the background, that's the tours that are going on around still here. still have a lot of activity over here. Yeah, so be sure to come down here and it's check it out. It's standing room only. That's right. <laughs> They're all watching us. That's right. That's, that's why they showed up today. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and, you know, I've been dying to ask this ever since I met you guys at the beginning of the show. You know, you've had 20 years, both of you have had 20 years corporate experience, myself as well. Uh -huh. And I was wondering, like, what is your other half? think about this life change and radio talk show and everything. 
want me to go first? Yeah, go, yeah. go first. That's a little easier, maybe, because my husband met me after I had left my corporate job. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that big of a change. And uh, he actually said to me after we'd been together about three months that he thought that possibly his reason for showing up in my life was so that he could support me while I went and lived my dream. Aww. So he's been very supportive. He was able to retire at 54. And he, uh, does some of his own things and he's real, real supportive of me. He shows up and helps me, totes things. He loves the radio show. I don't think either of our husbands ever miss a show. They never miss a show. Town, they don't miss a show. So he's, he's very supportive. And so my husband met me when I was in Fulton, America. So it's just like I change contracts. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think it's been an adjustment for him just as it's been for me. You know, because um, I think. Uh, something happens to, I don't know what happens to men, maybe they, you know, all go out and get a red horse or whatever, you know, when they're in their mid-40s or, or... He's not old enough. He's not old, old enough to have But I think um, something happens to women in their 40s and early 50s where, you know, they just look and, and sort of reevaluate what's going on in their life. And I knew I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. And that I was almost uh, uh, smothered. Uh, so um, he's been great. He's been writing right with me. He's our biggest radio fan. How would you say one of your mentors is doing this career change and continuing with the radio show? Wow. I think one of the issues is there weren't men. And I think that's what we try to do for other young women is to, do, to show them that you don't have to spend 20 years doing something you hate because you have to be good at it. Or made that decision when you graduated from college. Or, 18, you know? or yeah. you decided what you were going to major in yeah. college. You don't have to do it for the rest of your life, regardless of what your family and friends may say. And sometimes you need that support. Because most people, when I left my corporate job, most of my family and friends thought I had lost my mind. And they didn't mind telling me so. And so you have, to, you have to find other support in that. You have to find people who really want you to be happy, want to go, yay, good for you. So you try to do that for you. And we laugh and tell people all the time that if you look back on your childhood, you'll see things that you did that you just love to do, you were doing them in a play mode, that really come out in what you love to do as you grow up. And, uh, you know, both of us had experiences of that. You know, I would teach school in our basement every afternoon after school. All the neighborhood kids would show up. They would come and they would do homework and all sorts of things for me really? and the regular school. You wouldn't see me there. I, but, you know. You're off doing something you really want to do. Yeah. But I would have like six or seven kids in our basement and I would teach school. And so I knew that teaching in some form of fashion that's going to come back to you. And I also was a great singer in a hairbrush. And so I did all of the Supremes music and all of that. And maybe it was not singing that I was supposed to do, but entertaining me in some way. Yeah. I, talked to, I, I did that in front of the remote control a lot uh -huh. in my house. But I also, as part of my business, I run women's networking groups. I have groups in four different counties. And when I was a little girl, I used to start clubs so I could be the president. Uh -huh. And I could actually get, you know, this is in the mid to late 50s, I could get little girls to pay me five or ten cents to come into my bedroom for a club meeting. And then they would do what I she told them. She would say that entrepreneur was I coming know, out. Yeah. 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 You know, and then when they would get tired of me being bossy and listening to me, they would quit. And they I, would, go home. I would come up with a different reason for another club and I'd get them back again. So, but you know, that, that stint I, I did in corporate America, that very long stint, stifled a lot of the things that I was really about. And I think that's the message we need to get to. Not just young women, but young men too, that they want to be trapped. Oh, that's wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit more about the guests that you have on? Well, Jill, we mentioned Jill Moss Greenberg will be coming on in about two weeks to talk about the Maryland Heritage Women's Center because we think that's something that needs to get out. Uh, there's so many women we talk to that aren't even aware that it is a place um, or, you know, it, it is in existence. And so we think it's going to perform an important function. We're really looking forward to the fact that it's going to be a real building with walls one day that our young women and men can go in and actually see a lot of history about Maryland women that you don't find in the history book. Oh, it's great. Yeah, so that gives you a little bit of an idea of what the Heritage Center is all about. So, for our audience, how can they reach each one of you? I know you do two, two separate things. So. Well, the radio show. We have our own website for the radio show. It's Woman Talk. People want to make it women, but it's Woman Singular. WomanTalkLive.com. 
They can also go listen to all of our podcasts, our past shows. They can uh, send us an email. They can do anything they want. Sign up for our list from that. And then my website. Oh, we we'll talk about the fun events, too. Oh, the fun events. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we do a Woman Talk Live fun event. Um, and we came up with the fun event because uh, Jenny and I are recovering perfectionists. Uh, and workaholics. <laughs> and workaholics. So you got to have some fun in yeah, we, we start, yeah, schedule Yeah, we had started Perfectionist Anonymous. And um, so we decided we needed to schedule our um, fun events on our calendar so we would make time to have fun. Give me, give me a good example of it. Gosh, we did uh, kayaking on the gunpowder and then wow. had a... How many uh, women? 25, 30 women? Yeah. Just on that. And then we had afterwards, after we did that, we came back in and had wine and hors d'oeuvres on the shore of the gunpowder <laughs> river. And, you know, until the state, oh, not the, um, the park the range. The police told us we had to go home. They were closing. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. We closed the park. And what we else did we went down uh -huh. because a lot of people have never done that. And it was just a fun, um, you can be a little competitive, but you don't take it too seriously. And then we did we strip tease one on one. We took uh, strip tease lessons, and we strip actually had, yeah we you actually, add a whole bunch of stuff so you don't really take off anything, but yeah, you learn how to cover your hair, how to like fling your you learn how to fling your boa and stretch your stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> we did all sorts well, for of things. for some women, that's a real stretch. We even did pole dancing. That was part of that, though. That it's, was a different thing. Yeah, that was a different yeah. thing, but we actually, um, uh, that takes a lot of upper body strength. <laughs> so we have a, we whole, going new, back we have a whole new respect for that profession. <laughs> we, had, we did some uh, chick flick nights. We watched, uh, we went to this place that had a nice big screen and a DVD projector, and we would watch a movie that yeah, was particularly great, like Shirley Valentine. And uh, then we talked about it afterwards, about what the women thought and so forth. And we saw Muriel's wedding. Yeah. So I have this magazine that, that, that you publish this magazine? I do. It's, it's called a, On Purpose? On Purpose Woman. I started publishing that about four and a half years ago and it's a free local publication that will help women live richer, fuller lives. It's full of inspirational articles, uh, motivational things. Even our advertisers are really interesting because they're, they're entrepreneurs for the most part doing really unique things. And I'd always wanted to do a magazine. It was on my list of you know, top 100 things you want to do before you die. Radio yeah. show magazine. Yeah, yeah you're a two-bit lady. Television yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Really. Sure. yeah. And so uh, about five years ago, I, I met a woman who just graduated with a degree in graphic design. And I said, if I give you articles and ads, can you make it look like a magazine? Because I knew how to do that, and I didn't want to learn. And her face lit up, and she got very excited. And we did our first issue in December, and that and so it's a wonderful, uh, we, we um, distribute free in Baltimore City, Baltimore County, Howard, Frederick, Anne Arundel, and Harvard. We're pretty wise, we have 17,000 copies. 17,000, wow. Four and a half years. Wow. And wow. it's just been so well received. I mean, women will email and write and call and tell me that something they saw in that magazine changed their life. That's awesome. It's really a lot of fun. Now, where do you get the material? I, well, obviously, a lot of people want to be in the magazine, so I get a lot of people who want to write for it. Okay. But it's uh, it's not an info brochure. You know, women have to be able, or men, we also have some men writing for it, they have to have something to say yeah. that isn't just a commercial. And so I get it from all over. I just um, I meet people. I meet a lot of people. I mean, we have a database for our radio show, about 2,300, I think, people locally. So there's a lot of connections out there. Well, if you hear all the commotion, there's definitely a lot of activity yeah. going on. It sounds like we have a group of kids over here yeah. right around the corner. A happy day. Oh, it's a happy day. <laughs> yeah. It's a great place to take your That's family. Right. Wow, so the radio show is wonderful. So what about future plans taking it to like satellite radio or expanding in the other markets? Well, we want a two-hour show. We want a two-hour show. Oh, okay. We also think we would be great on morning drive time. So if anybody, you know, listening out there, don't we think we'd be great on morning We think we'd be great. You know, a daily show. Sure. Because if you listen to what's on in the morning, it's the same thing on 15 yeah. different channels. So we, and so we want to do something different in the morning. So we'd love to do that. Okay, so it's called the Pink Slipper Show. Uh, <laughs> the fuzzy, the fuzzy bedroom oh, slipper yeah. show or whatever. And we do think syndication is in our future. We're, we're not saying that too loud yet because I don't think we're, we're wanting it. We're going to say it real loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready for it right this minute, but tomorrow I will be. Tomorrow you'll be ready. Things happen quickly for you, girl. They do. That's yeah, why you, you, you got to plan a little bit. That's right. Uh, that's right. Okay, so any last thoughts for our viewing audience? Oh, gosh. Um, listen to the radio show. Yeah, listen to the radio show. Let us know what you think. 
Yeah, let, and join us on a fun event. Sign up for our mailing list. So we do send out an announcement every week that lets everyone know what's coming up, so what guests we're having, and so people can get on, go on our website and then sign up for that. So they'll be right. So, so a couple things. What time is the show? Just to go ahead and repeat that. What time is your show? Every Wednesday night, from six to seven p.m. on V W V I E thirteen seventy a.m. Thirteen seventy in Baltimore. Okay. And is there any contact information? We've already said it once. Let's go ahead. WomanTalkLive.com will get you anything. You can also email us at WomanTalkLive. WomanTalkLive at, at Yahoo.com. Yahoo. I never use that. So <laughs> you never email yourself. But another thing, if somebody is not in the listening area, and we have people that actually listen to the show that live all over the country, and even friends in Hawaii and South Africa, um, you can go to the 1370.com and listen to the show live wow. you know, and it's airing. That's um, cool. And then the podcast later. And I also want to throw out that we have a lot of men who listen to our show because we have one call in every week who can win a prize pack. And we, we have men probably once every four times. And sometimes, and you know they're listening and not calling too. So, but I want to say that there's a lot of great stuff for men. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much well, for thank you. your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's fun. This has been another episode of Top of the Morning. And we'll see you next time.